Thanks for staying with us on SABC News. Now, the Rand was trading at around 17 Rand and 5 cents to the dollar this morning. Goketso Mano, an economist at FMB, joins me on what this means for you and I living in South Africa. Goketso, thanks so much for your time. Just explain to us the Rand dollar exchange, when we last saw it at this level, and why this is happening. Sure, and thank you for having me. Hello to all your viewers. So the last time we saw the RAN trading at these levels was in the latter part of 2020. And you would remember at that time, you know, most of our lockdown restrictions were largely still in place. And the reason we're seeing a weaker RAND in recent days, you can consider a myriad of, of factors, but the most important being a stronger dollar. So it's a, it's a stronger dollar story, actually. Uh, we have seen uh, growing risks of recession. Um, a lot of market participants and economists are speaking about, you know, probability of, of recession rising at the time. Um, you know, this is particularly in the U.S., in the euro area, where we have seen, you know, the, the shortages of raw material, energy prices being elevated, the impact of the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict filtering through and, and creating some of these supply chain disruptions, but also um, contributing to the uh, lifting of prices globally. So this elevated inflation has created the need for central banks around the globe to start tightening monetary policy, and that in itself has started to create some uh, growth impact or has started to weigh on growth. And so as a, as a result of this, you know, some of your uh, safe haven assets or what can be considered safe having assets uh, such as the dollar have started to gain some strength and uh, for South Africa obviously we do have that impact coming also through from the commodity price side where you would see that with lower growth uh, there should be lower demand for commodities and as a result of that um, as a commodity net uh, net exporter of commodities uh, that should weigh on the rent as well. Okay, so what does the 17 rand to the dollar mean in terms of how we buy goods, food, services and other things? Sure. So think about it in terms of your, your import bill. So any other products that are imported, um, that that those prices are going to be now elevated just from an exchange rate perspective. Um, when you think about it, you can think about vehicles, for example, uh, clothing uh, is also uh, part of that import bill. But most importantly, you have fuel that is uh, one of the biggest uh, import uh, items for from the consumer perspective. And and the the important factor about fuel is that uh, it filters through to everything in the economy. Um, it will affect the distribution or the cost of distributing goods. It will also affect the cost of transporting people. Um, eventually, also impacting services. Uh, so this this this. This uh, more elevated or weaker exchange rate will filter through to consumer prices eventually. And oil prices have also been a concern of late. Are they trending lower, and what could that mean for us? Mm. Fortunately, I mean, when you think when you look at the the, the current. Um, you know, uh, prices when, when you think about the Central Energy Fund or the data that the Central Energy Fund um, uh, produces on a daily basis, you will see that most of that uh, upside risk is coming from the rand. What we have seen from the imported oil products is that those have been trading lower, uh, especially when you think about the start of, of July, so the first couple of days of July. Um, we did also see oil prices moving lower internationally. I mean, if you think about it, lower growth means lower demand, uh, lower movement, um, and, and potentially lower demand for, for, for uh, movement of people as well. So, so demand for oil is likely to be impacted by recession fears, and as a result of that, we are likely to see oil prices uh, moving lower. Um, if this is sustained, this will support you know lower uh, petrol prices at the pump for for South African consumers. But once again, the upside risk here is coming from the rand, which is weaker at the moment. All right, and then what impact does these rolling blackouts, or as they put, load shedding, have on our day-to-day -day costs and also the potential investment for South Africa? Yeah, so this is a, a, a big or an important factor that we're thinking about right now. It's not the main driver of the RAND in our view, um, but it is going to impact our near-term growth projections. Um, load shedding has the impact of, uh, or has an impact on production. It also has an impact on sentiment. 
So the way that investors and consumers are thinking through future spending or future investment will also be impacted by, by load shedding, um, especially if the if situation does not improve significantly um, in a short period of time. Because if you're an investor or somebody uh, in business, you know, this will affect the cost of conducting business. Um, it may also affect your ability to produce. So in the near term, we see load shedding very uh, weighing on growth and, and as a result likely weighing on consumer and investor decisions going forward. Okay, so what are the implications of the decline in the mining production data that was released a little bit earlier on today? Mm. So what we see is in April and May, we had lower production data when we're thinking about um, both manufacturing and mining. Mining was slightly better uh, today versus what we saw on Tuesday with the manufacturing data. And what, is this, what this is telling us is we're likely going to see a negative contribution from both these sectors in the second quarter of the year. We're already expecting GDP in the second quarter to be weak when you think about the, the, the flooding in KZN. Uh, we also have the impact of load shedding which intensified in the second quarter so all of this are likely going to add you know or, or, or it's, it's just a um it's just damping the fact that you know the second quarter gdp outcome is likely going to be weak uh, following a very strong or, or relatively strong uh, first quarter gdp data and just talk to me about what could change the kind of bleak outlook we've spoken about in terms of prices and that rand dollar exchange yeah, I mean, it's going to be uh, tricky, but monetary policy here uh, is, is, is one of the important um, authorities to make sure that uh, inflation does not run off uh, or remain elevated in the, in the future as well. That's why we have seen the, the U.S. Fed um, hiking quite aggressively in the, in the previous meeting. They expected to hike once again by 75 basis points in the July meeting that's coming through later this month. Um, as a result of this, this is likely going to put upward pressure on interest rates in emerging markets, which are regarded to be slightly behind the curve. I mean, this includes the South African Reserve Bank, which we're also expecting them to front load interest rate hikes this year, um, ending this year at around 6.25%. So this is where the, the, the role of monetary policy is going to be important. But I think also a de-escalation of geopolitical tensions will also likely um, you know, alleviate the pressure on, on prices internationally. Uh, we should have obviously filtered through to South Africa. And uh, the, the thing that we have, or the fact that we have discussed earlier on, I mean, weaker global growth outcomes are likely to weigh on spending, weigh on demand. Uh, we've already started to see, you know, uh, markets pricing that into oil prices. So, so as these uh, couple of factors uh, work together, we're likely to see prices come, uh, come down eventually, um, possibly uh, early next year for South okay. Africa, that is. Goketo Mano, an economist at FNB. Thanks so much for your time and insight this afternoon.